ಅನುದಿನ ಅನುಕ್ಷಣ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ಕಲಿಕೆಯ ಹೊಸ ಹಾದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜೊತೆಗೂಡಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯ ಹಾಕೋಣ ಸಂತಸದಿ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಾಯಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ Hello namaste very good morning i am your teacher dhananjay back to see you again hi kids how are you doing i hope everything is going fr- well from your side it's been very long that we are not able to go to school and have our english classes regularly from face to face mode but today it's more even more interesting because you can see english lesson sitting at home right on your favorite channel welcome i welcome once again dear kids we are all fond of homes we love our homes we love our home, family members most of the time we spent there dear students most of you are now watching english english classes from your home what is the first word comes into your mind when you listen home so when you listen the word home what all comes to your mind well i am here for a reason when i think of home i lot of memories lot of opinions lot of feelings come in my mind the home is a place where my parents live my brothers my siblings everyone my grandparents wow what a place it is whatever we want we will get there love affection food education what not that is the reason we all love our homes dear kids uh on your screen you can see the picture of a home and that's what i am exactly telling you all home is a place where we all want to live home is where love resides memories are created in kannada there is a proverb mane modala paata shale maneye modala paata shale which means home is first school home provides us basic knowledge it gives us culture it teaches us to be kind and brave life's lessons are taught at home a home is made of hopes and dreams home is not a place it's a feeling so every education before coming to school a formal a basic education is being taught by mother that is the reason mane modala patashale minimum things that you learn the mother la- mother tongue you learn there how to wear the dress how to come to school very neatly and very uh, smartly all these things are being taught how to eat how to use a hand how to comb your hair all these things are being taught by especially your mother and of course by grandparents as well as your father dear kids but something interesting also take place in home home is not just a place where you all have the fun but home is a place where actually a good education takes place then look at the picture on the screen father is calling his son what may be the reason that father is calling his the child <clears throat> as you are in home you are supposed to do a lot of mischief activities you are sometimes very naughty too but by doing naughty things do you think that your parents will appreciate you never they are always after you to treat your behavior don't do this don't go there don't eat that don't sit there don't sleep there don't do that all this don't 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 keep going you understand what i'm trying to tell you yes exactly what might be the reason father must be scolding the son any reason sometimes son is not allowed to come into the room when father is working and that is the reason sometimes father gets annoyed and he gets angry too have you have have you had the same experience of course you must have had some experience when your parents are not happy what you are doing look at the picture let's go the one more thing oh my god what's mother doing she is asking the child to shut his mouth what what would be the reason what do you see in the picture why grown ups keep saying to children shut up 
Have you got this experience at home? I think all of us, even when I was a kid, my parents were always behind me saying, shut up Dhananjay, shut your mouth, don't talk too much, when elders are there. So grown-ups have got some setup and they have made some, you know, do's and do's and don'ts. So they have some set of rules for the kids, they have made up, they have made up certain kind of principles for us to follow. Look at that, Mama is saying, shut up, that means the boy must have spoken something which never should have spoken. Let's get to the next one. Look at the screen. What's being written there? It's there. Dear children, who all live in your home? Who are the members in your home? I have already spoken that home is a place where the entire family lives in. Parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters and of course ourselves. That is why it is the most beautiful place on the earth. How do you feel at home? If your parents are very strict, if your parents are very, very uh, strict and you're very disciplined, do you like it? If you like it, what is the reason? How do you feel at home? Are you feeling safe? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling really interested and curious to be at home? What exactly the feeling staying in home? Most of us, we agree that we have the feeling of satisfaction, we have the feeling of safe, we have the feeling of protection. That is the beauty of staying at home. Who is more strict in a home? Yes, this question is more interesting. Sometimes father is very lenient, he gives us freedom, he doesn't mind what do we do, but mother is a very strict hard master. She is not happy with whatever we do. She is there as the teacher, for now and then, she takes, takes up a class and tells us how to behave. That's why I'm asking you, who is very strict in your home? And do you like your parents to be very strict? Of course you must because that is the only way you can grow smarter and intelligent. Are you being scolded for a being mischief? <laughs> Look at the question again. Are you being scolded for being mischief? Many mischief things you do and that you are, you are not even aware what do you do. You just go on doing mischief activities. Maybe it may be a very silly thing. Your parents say, your parents ask you to place the slippers neatly outside the door. Sometimes you may keep it in any way you want. That is not a way to do. That's why they are there to scold and change your behavior. And next question you see, who does say about do's and don'ts to you? That's all I have just expressed my opinion. In home, parents or grandparents or grown-ups, they have a list of do's and don'ts. As a child, as a kid, you are supposed to understand what you must do and what you must never do. So who is going to tell you all this? Parents? Of course they are. And that is why you can become a smart girl or a smart boy. Let's get ahead. Do you remember being scolded by your parents when you did certain things as a child and you wondered why adults got away with the same things that you did? At the moment you, at the moment you would have thought that your parents were unfair. So let me put this in this way. When grown-ups do the same thing, nobody scold them. But when you do, they are there to scold you. For example, you may have this experience, when examinations are nearing, maybe in the month of January or February, you are supposed to read, study, prepare for the exam. They definitely ask you to turn off the TV, do not see the TV, do not use the mobile phone, do not see the movies, do not listen to music. They always tell you to study, study, study. But do they do the same what you do? They watch TV, they watch news, they use mobile phones. At that point of time, you may feel that they are very unfair because they say something to you to follow but they never do it themselves. Why is the reason you should answer? Because they are very concerned about you. Watching TV, getting the entertainment or doing any activity that is very interested to you may be done later the examinations. What is the most important thing is to prepare for exam. Priority is important. Dear kids, why I have spoken so much about parents' home, their strictness, their discipline 
and your their relationship in a home is because we have a beautiful poem the name of the poem you can see on the screen authorship who is an author author is someone who writes books who writes novels who writes stories and the name authorship is an interesting poem what shall we see in this let's get ahead but before that it's very important that who exactly composed this poem who written who has written this poem because someone has to write a beautiful poem for us to read and it's our duty to know something about the poet the one who has composed a national anthem one who founded an ideal school shantiniketan and who is none other than the great shri rabindranath tagore he was born in 1861 and he was a multifaceted personality he was not just a one person to be observed as but he had lot of talents and that is the reason we all have huge respect and he is a person to be followed and he is the great inspiration to all of us let us look at his uh, personal details he was born in 1861 and uh, he was a great poet novelist dramatist short story writer patriot and philosopher was born in calcutta basically calcutta means today's west bengal he was a bengali poet but he was not just a freedom fighter he was a freedom fighter patriot a social reformer poet dramatist what not can you imagine yourself that you be a dancer singer very good at classroom mathematics you are so interested you are very good at drawing you are good at uh, cultural activities yes we all have to develop these kind of qualities only then we are going to understand the world better and not only that look at the another information he was also a social reformer a political activist an educationist a painter and a translator he was a great personality with exceptional and uh, very uh, great qualities and what is what used to be followed so this great writer has written the poem that you and me we are going to discuss, discuss that is authorship let's begin the poet of the poem authorship is ramana tagore this poem is beautifully presents the innocence of child it is set it is setting his home we better know the meaning of new words which come in this poem dear kids as we all are aware who has written this poem rabindranath tagore of course and what is the poem is about we try to know the innocence mindset of a child how children we do behave do we behave like grown ups so serious all the time or uh, very naughty doing mischief enjoying making smiles and making some noises creating disturbances in classes disturbing in the home exactly that's what innocence is all about so the same we are going to see we have a child like you in this poem and he also does exactly you do at your home and where does the poem take place the poem is all about taking a place in a home there is a conversation there is a talk between mother and the child the child asks some questions the boy asks some questions mother answers and this conversation is really a uh, very interesting that we are going to see but before that it's very important for all of us to understand some of the words and their meanings which will help us to understand the poem much better what is the first word please note down in your notebook as well as you can read the word and its meaning make out the meaning of word make out is to understand to perceive example i cannot make out chinese i cannot make out chinese so as we are in the society we learn some languages of course we have, we know understand our mother tongue if we, if my mother tongue is kannada i speak it very comfortably but if if i have some friends who speak other than kannada like uh, tamil malayalam or urdu any language i can learn but if i am totally unfamiliar if i am totally new for any language maybe chinese i may not able to speak it if you ask me to speak french i am not i may not be able to speak it so what you do not what you cannot understand is is something like i cannot make out other example i want to give you 
what uh, the meaning of make out is to understand and to perceive i can make out your intention i can make out your intention means i can understand what is your intention so your intention is to take me to a lunch so these are the different uh, uh, we can use this word in our sen- in our own uh, sentences making out means to understand to perceive to grasp all these meanings the next one is giants having extremely large size proportion or power giants means very large like a monster very huge very uh, very something you cannot imagine the size of a particular object or a creature you might have heard some fairy story stories uh, some stories narrated by your grandmother there once upon a time there was a giant there was a monster there is a devil so devils how do you imagine are they very tiny like ants no they are very big their body size so big and tall they are very large kind of creatures having extremely large size how can we use uh, this word in your own sentence for example uh, i have visited with my friends to hampi there are giant type of rocks gigantic rocks very large size kind of rocks structures i think you got it let's go for the next word that comes in a poem fairies fairy is a part of the folklore of many countries and culture in kannada we can we can call it as janapada geetegalu janapada sahitya fairy tales are mostly are from the folklore of many countries and culture in fairy tales we have opportunity to understand the heritage the language the culture of that particular society how can we use this word in our, our own sentences my grandmother used to tell lot of fairy tales before we go to sleep i think most of you have this experience grandmas are fantastic storytellers we want them to narrate stories just be we just before we fall asleep next often again and again often means doing an activity again and again how often do you call your mother sometimes you keep on calling your mother until she responds that's what the word about slightest that means inconsiderable slightest means very micro very tiny very little slightest for example if you watch cricket nowadays you can watch a cricket on tv lot of technology has improved sometimes batsman plays against the ball ball goes to the keeper and batsman thinks that he is not out but the only technology and computer confirms there was a slightest touch to the bat and that signals out slightest means very minute almost very little you cannot see it okay now we are here to read the poem please open your textbook and go through the lines otherwise you have an opportunity to see the lines of the poem and we go ahead how it begins a child a child like you speaks to his mother and what does he say let's understand let's listen what exactly they are talking and let's be the audience of their conversation and enjoy the poem you say that father writes a lot of books but what he writes i don't understand what he says mamma you say that father writes a lot of books but what he writes i don't understand that means what is the job of father he is a writer he is not, he is a writer people do lot of different jobs occupations farmers drivers police teachers engineers doctors and the same way few of the individuals few of the people their job their profession is to write and earn their livelihood in this poem the child's father is uh, a writer and that's why he's telling you say that father writes a lot of books but what he writes i don't understand so you don't have to understand because grown ups write different kind of things you may not be able to understand but the child is also not able to understand what his father writes about and what is the next line see concentrated uh, see with the uh, focus he was reading to you all the evening but could you really make out what he meant the child is telling mama 
Throughout the evening, he went on he went on telling what he wrote. But did you make out? Already I have told you the meaning of make out. Make out means understand. He is asking a question. The child is asking a question to mother. He was reading. He means what? Who? Father. Father was reading to you all the evening whatever he has written. But could you really make out what he meant? Look at how the child is asking questions. What does he say next? What nice stories, mother, you can tell us. Why can't father write like that? I wonder. So child is asking his mother, Mama, how beautiful stories you narrate to me. How nice stories you tell me. How interesting stories you make and tell me. But why can't father uh, tell such stories? Why can't father tell us the stories like you? So he is asking Mama, Mama, why can't father is like you? Why can't he makes up stories like you? You tell me beautiful stories. Why can't father does? He is asking a question. Let's get ahead. Did he never hear from his own mother stories of giants and fairies and princes? Has he forgot them all? So now child is moving ahead with his questions, sharp questions. He is asking to his mother, Mama, did mama, grandma, did, didn't grandma tell any stories to father? Didn't grandfather tell any to stories to father? That's why he is asking, did he never hear from his own mother? Father's own mother is who? Child's grandma. Did he never hear from his own mother stories of giants and fairies and princes? Has he forgotten them all? So now we have a clue. The child in the poem likes what kind of stories? He likes the stories of giants. He likes the stories related to folklore. He likes fairy tales. That is very confirmed. Look at the line. Did he never hear from his own mother stories of giants and fairies and princes? Has he forgot them all? He never told me a story like that. This is the question. Look at the next one. Often when he gets late for his bath, you have to go and call him hundred times. You wait and keep his dishes warm for him. So, he, the child has observed daily activities at home. He is asking, often, again and again, when he gets late for his bath, you have to go and call him hundred times. Mama, you have to always go after father and make him to remind, go for bath. You have to ask him to go for bath. And you keep the dishes, you keep the lunch, you keep the breakfast, you keep the dinner ready, warm. But as he comes late, it all goes waste. But he goes on writing and forgets. Father always plays at making books. That's what he, he child is asking. You prepare everything for father, but does he come and take that uh, that you have prepared immediately? No. He goes on writing and writing and he forgets to go to bath, he forgets to have a lunch, he forgets to take the breakfast and he always plays with the books because he is a writer. If I ever go to play in father's room, you come and call me. What a naughty child. If I make the slightest noise, you say, don't you see father is at work? What's the fun of always writing and writing? So actually he is making complaint. What complaint the child is making to his mom? He is telling, if I ever go to father's room, you come and say, me, what a naughty child. Shouldn't I go to father's room? Should I not play in the father's room? Anytime I go to father's room, you come and say, I am a naughty child. If I make it the slightest noise, don't you see the father at his work? You always tell me I shouldn't be going father's home. If I make a little noise accidentally, then also you say don't disturb father because he is at work. I ask you a question. What's the fun of always writing and writing? Mama, what enjoyment is getting father just by writing and writing? I really don't understand. So this is all what being asked by a child to his mother. When I take up father's pen or pencil and write upon his book just as he does A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. What do you get across with me then mother? You never say a word when father writes. I is asking, you, father is playing with the books. He writes so much. But if I go and write something, you never allow me to do. The child is make, making really sensible questions. And look at the next one. When my father wears such a heap of paper, mother, you don't seem to mind at all. But if I take only one sheet to make both with, you say, child, how troublesome you are. What is this logic, mom? 
further waste hundreds of pages. You don't mind. But if I take only one sheet of paper to prepare the board, then you say, I'm a troublesome. He is making some interesting questions. Let's see. What do you think of further spoiling sheets and sheets of paper with black marks all over on both slides? The child is telling the same. You are, not, you are least bothered when you waste the sheets, but you are very, very concerned when I take a single sheet and that I use for the making the boat. Dear children, I hope the poem is being understood. Then let's, let me ask you some question. The entire poem is very simple. A child asks very com a lot of questions to his mother and the child says, child asks, as father is writing and writing, what is the joy he is getting uh, writing and writing? And uh, how beautiful stories you tell me, but father cannot tell me the beautiful stories. And also he says that whether uh, pup, uh, dad's mom never told him any stories or uh, has he forgotten them all? What is the beauty of writing and writing? This kind of questions he keeps asking. And also he asks that he is not allowed to, why he is not allowed to go to father's room, why he is not to make use of sheets to make some boats. This kind of questions he asks. Throughout the poem, we get the point. He is very innocent. Then let me ask you a question. The question is, who is the speaker in the poem? Who is the speaker in the poem? That means, who asks questions? Just we have discussed the child. Answer is, the child. What does the child want father to write about? Father is a writer. But what his son, what the child wants father to write? He wants his father to write the stories which are very interesting like fairy tales or the stories of giants like that. The father forgets to have his bath and food. Why does this happen? Because he is so busy with writing that he almost forgets to do all these activities. Why does the mother keep scolding the child? Why does mother scold, uh, keep scolding the child? Because the child in the poem keeps interviewing, uh, keeps uh, uh, disturbing father's work. He goes into the room, he is making some noise. That is spoiling the father's work. That is why mama is very upset. Next one. Is mother right in suppressing the enthusiasm of the child? Do you think mom in this poem is very appropriate? Is she correct that she shuts the mouth of the child every time he makes some noise or uh, he is doing some activity? Do you think mom in the poem is very appropriate? If yes, why? If not, if not, why not? Dear kids, it's been very interesting. All these questions are answered. I want you to read the poem, enjoy the poem and write a summary of the poem at home. And I want to give you an activity before I end up this session. What is an activity that's on the screen? Write down instances from your childhood when your mother, when you are when you're prevented from doing what you wanted to do. So what is an activity? Write down instances from your childhood when you are prevented from doing what you wanted to do. That this means some experiences, some memories you have to write down. You wanted to do something, you wanted to go to a village fair, you wanted to go to a movie, you wanted to go to your, watch a cr cricket match, but you are not allowed from your parents. Write that down and also write your uh, quarrels with your mother and father and also tell some interesting episodes. Write down your notebook. This is Dhananjay. I appreciate listening to this poem. I hope you have enjoyed this poem. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next session. Take care. Anudina, anukshana, maniyelu kaliyona, kali ke ya ho sahari ali, jo te gudi hechi ya ha kona, sante chadi kaliyona, namma hindi ayi classy nali. Yes sir. Yes, teacher. That's it, ma'am.